Okay, so now that you have all of your pieces, all of your papers pulled out of your blocks, we're almost ready to start attaching the inner and outer borders to that. This is when you wanna pay really close attention to your pattern directions. They start on page 66, but we're gonna be going through this step by step. So you have all your pieces. This is where laying them out on a floor or on a design wall or whatever happens to work for you. If you wanna break it out into like rows, that's a great way to do this. We're gonna go through this both how to do this by machine exactly as it's written in the pattern. And then if you have opted to go the um, acrylic route, if you're gonna hand piece all of this quilt, they have a, we have acrylics that are meant for the cornerstones and the sashing and the outer borders. We'll go through how to do it both ways for you. Okay, so we've got our Mick Jaguar. This was sent in month one. So you're gonna need to pull that out from that. We sent that because it kind of evened out the weight for shipping each month and we didn't want it to be so cumbersome. So let's start going through that. So you've got your piece for that. What's going to happen is this is in step two on your page 66 of your Queen of Diamonds pattern. So I've got this at the zero line. What you're gonna do is we've got the selvage. I just have this folded in half. This is the selvage edge. This is a full width of fabric. I just have it folded in half so that we can show it a little more easily. So I'm gonna line this up on my zero. We are cutting 16 inch strips of this and you don't have to be super whoop, um, worried about exactly how this is gonna line up at this point. These are This is forgiving, so don't stress out about that. So once you've got the 16 inch strip, you'll see there's a photo in your pattern here of you've got your selvage along the bottom edge and then these are 16 inch wide but you're full with the fabric and so you can see how the color gradates down the width of fabric and so this is what really we thought gives this quilt a lot of extra visual interest and so what we're going to do here is i'm going to turn this so this is your 16 inch length i'm going to cut this selvage off here move this guy over so that i can cut that off this is scrap we're gonna line this up here and i'm just gonna start cutting two inch strips of this and so what you're gonna end up with is basically a whole bunch of two inch by 16 inch strips that are done by color. So you will also notice that on the front side is not completely identical to the back. So I like to lay these out in kind of color families and we'll talk more about that in just a moment. So let me get a few of these cut because basically what you're gonna do, and you don't have to do this, this is extra, which sort of just makes your quilt extra. So if it's too much work for you and you just wanna get these borders on, that's totally fine. You don't have to color coordinate those to your blocks, but I'm gonna say, okay, these are more purpley blocks. This is more of a pinky. This kind of starts to, these are more pink red because what we did with our blocks, and I don't have all of them because they've been sewn into quilts. What we did with our blocks is say, okay, well, this particular block feels more pinks, purples. So what I'm gonna do is take those borders that are that color, so see, how these feel more red orange. These you start to get into some of the blue greens. And so with the previous block where I took all my papers out, I was showing was more green. I'll show you what it does. Let me get two more of these cut. What it does is it really just creates a border that kind of makes those colors stick out and stand out a little more. So I'll show you the difference if you put say the green blue border on that block for this inner piece. Don't stress about like getting the Jaguar's face in there. That'll drive you bananas. So don't, don't worry about that. But with these more green blue ones, let's say that these, this is probably what I would use with that because I like that this blue kind of ties in with these dots. These limey colors really relate to this. If you were to put the red oranges on there, let's just say, it gives it more of a scrappy look. If that's your jam, I say go for it. I personally am a little type A and want everything to match, so I would go with these blues. But you can see kind of the contrast. If you want them to stand out, you could go this route. 
If you want them to match more, you could go this route. So you're gonna get all these cut. You're just gonna follow your directions in the pattern for that and you'll end up with a total of 96 strips. And so what I would do, this is where your design wall will come in really handy, is you can, you're gonna need four strips per block. So let me take my pieces here. We'll pretend that I cut all green strips. This one starts to transition a little bit into the red orange, but let's just pretend. What I would personally do is pin all four of these together with the block that they're gonna go on so that next step, the next step with this is you're gonna be coming to your machine. And so we're gonna go really in depth. I will go through exactly how to sew these on. The one thing I want to mention is do not trim your blocks. It is totally fine. And this is the point at which we calculate because a lot of this is sewn on the bias and depending on how much you pulled or don't stress out about any of that, it's totally fine. These borders and the sashing are the great equalizer. So what we're gonna do is make all these blocks the same dimension, which we'll talk about more in the next video of machine piecing. So do not, if you lay all of your blocks out and you say, oh my gosh, this one block is a half inch bigger than my other one, don't cut it because what's gonna happen is you're gonna lose your points. So resist the urge to cut it. I promise it'll all work out. We're gonna go through machine sewing be in the next video. I'll get all my machine pieces together and we'll start going through that. So get to this point and then we'll be back soon to go through all of how to transition to machine piecing. One thing I did promise that we were gonna go over the lattice border. So same thing, you're just gonna cut those the 16 inch wide. If you're using the acrylics um, for the borders, this would be, you really just need to pick a route. If you're gonna English paper piece, these are gonna be your best choice. If you're going to machine piece, you don't need these, disregard this. We got a lot of requests that said in the very beginning, we wanna make sure, or we wanna do our entire quilt machine pieced. And so pick a direction before you start going to town on cutting your sashing because it'll make it a lot easier. So if you're going, this is gonna be your inner border piece. If you're going the English paper piece route, you'll see, again, we've talked about how instead of making these really tight um, angles here in the corner, they're dog-eared, that's to reduce the bulk. So you'll see a little dog ear here, 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 um, just so that they're not so sharp and running into lots of, you don't need all that whoops, extra fabric in your seams there. This is where template grips, especially for these long ones, make a big difference so that it doesn't slide. So just keep good tabs on it not sliding around. So if you're going this route, you'll do the same thing. You're just going to cut those pieces out. This, because of the way I was cutting it, is going to cut two at a time. Um, and so if you're going this route, you're just going to cut these out of your McJaguar across that 16 inch width. If you've cut that 16 inch width, you are perfect. And just continue marching up that color gradation so that you can do the exact same thing that we were doing here and matching them to your block. So we'll see you soon. Hi friends, it's Diane. I'm here filling in for Chelsea while she's at H&H. &H. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about where she left off last time when putting the sashing on our Queen of Diamond block. Um, she cut the sashing, if you remember. She's got it, we've got it all ready to go and I'm gonna show you how to machine put this on. Um, as you can tell, a um, little bit different in the background, we are moving. We have a new setup for the new shop. We'll be in in a couple of weeks, but for today you get us just the way we are. So we'll go ahead and talk about how to apply the sashing to the pieces. Okay, we are going to take the sashing and it's longer than we need. So it's uh, we don't have to worry about positioning it in an exact spot. We are going to put this under the machine and what we need to remember is at this point we are sewing a 3 8 inch seam. If you remember when we when Chelsea showed you that this is where we're sewing and it's 3 8 inch from there to there it's not your quarter inch seam. If you sew a quarter inch seam 
it won't quite work out. So we need to sew the three eighths inch seams so we get in the block in the right place. So I'm gonna do it from this side, just so you can see that adjustment. And I'm just gonna sew this out. And I do know where on my machine there's a mark that lets me know three eighths besides just this mark here. So I'm aware of that. Kind of helps me to keep things the way I want them. Okay, pretty simple, straight seam. under a little bit, that's okay. And there we go. Now I'm gonna take that and press it towards the band or towards the sashing. So I will press it there. And I'm gonna switch over to my cutting and show you what I do with this next. We've got our piece pressed now we're going to do a little bit of trimming. I'm gonna lay our block out and I am just gonna trim it straight. There we go. You see that? I'm gonna take this side and do the same thing. Just trim it with the block. Okay, so now we have this and we're gonna go with our next one. We're gonna set it here, just like we did the other, kind of center it. We'll trim off those ends so it doesn't matter. You have to have it right in this exact spot. Take it to the machine again and sew the next seam on. Same way, using that three eighths inch seam. Now we're gonna switch over to one that I've already got done. So you can see I put the second one on, put the third one on, what, and then went all the way around. So you put them all that way using the three eighths inch seam. And now we need to trim the whole block. And you're gonna pretend this is a lovely piece center. And we are gonna trim this a one and a quarter. You're gonna put the quarter inch line right there on the seam. And I'm gonna trim it. It's kind of a little space here. So trim all the way around the block. And now it's the correct size for us to go onto the next step. 